mistake. Fizzer Ryan made a mistake. Hello, everyone. <laughs> okay, this is my second time starting the live. Happy Wednesday to everyone. It's 7 p.m. for me. I've had a few technical issues. <laughs> so I'm using a new device, so please bear with me. But if you can let me know if this is working okay, if you can see me, and then I will invite in our very talented guest today. We're all in for a treat. Um, hopefully it works. So just let me know if you can see me and hear me. I didn't have my countdown on for going live. So I just want to make sure that this is working. I'm seeing hello. Hello, Jose. Hello, English Vibes. Hello, Andy. Hello, Akash. Hello, Carmen, who I know is in Manchester, which is not too far from me. Um, hello, Majad. Hello, Sunshine. Um, so hello to everyone. So this live is not going to be me on my own. I am going to be joined by a special guest who I'm gonna add in now. It's her first YouTube live. It's mine on a new device. So let's hope that technology is on our side and it works. <laughs> so Fizzera, if I add you. Oh, hello. hello, it works, perfect. Okay, let me get my frame yes. right. Hi, Gary. Yes, How are sorry. you? We didn't have quite time. I'm really well. How are you? I'm really well, too. Thanks so much. I'm so excited to be here. It's my first YouTube live. Me, too. Yes, I it, know. It's crazy. It, it's it is nice. not your first YouTube live, is it? So I've done a few YouTube lives. I've kind of moved across from Instagram to YouTube lives. Um, I've done four or five. I'm getting to grips with it, but it's um, it's quite confusing. It feels a little bit different from Instagram. I think Instagram, because it's on your phone, it feels a bit more friendlier. Yeah. This takes me a little bit of time to understand. Okay. But can you also do it on your phone? Can you do YouTube lives on your phone? Yeah, you can. You can. I'm, I'm yet to do that. I'm sticking to my laptop. But um, yes. But also, how are another, you? another um, question. I'm not on YouTube and I don't get to see the comments, right? Is that how it's supposed to work? So this is now live on YouTube. Okay. Um, I don't know. Can you see the comments? For me, they come on the right hand side. So I'm on a different website. It's called StreamYard. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm on. So it's like a hosting one to be able to do um, shares. It's not okay. quite simple as Instagram. But I can so get on YouTube on my phone separately. Yeah, there is and I can highlight the comments as well for us. So for example, um, let's say, here we go. So Savam has said hello to us. Uh, Comanche's asked you a question, which is a good, she said, is she a Ra Iranian? Is or she Iranian? <laughs> what do you guys think? <laughs> if I'm um, Middle Eastern, do you think I'm Iranian? <laughs> and Savam is saying hello, oh, Fizzera. Hello, hello. So, wow. okay, uh, so you're uh, highlighting these, right? So I'm highlighting these, yes. Um, so English right. Bad is saying, I know her from Instagram. Oh, she oh. is amazing. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, definitely. So Fizzera, for those who don't know you, um, could you give us a little bit of backstory, um, how you got into teaching, um, anything you care to share about yourself? Absolutely. So I am Iranian. I'm from Iran, born and raised. And I've been in the US for the past five years. I've studied English literature and English teaching, TESOL. Mm -hmm. And I've been teaching ESL, English as a Second Language, and all these standardized tests out there, like the GRE and IELTS and TOEFL and um, Cambridge and all that. And I'm in LA now. I've been living in LA for the past five years. And I've start, I have started my uh, social media activity about um, nine months ago. So I'm pretty <laughs> new to this, to all of this. 
yeah. um, Instagram and YouTube at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it's been really enjoyable for me for the most part, you know, 80% positive to 20% negative. Yeah. Um, and yes, so that's a brief yeah. summary about me. You're quite similar to me, Fizzera, actually. So I started about nine months ago. I started last October. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, and I, yeah. I agree with you. I would say it's 80% amazing, incredible, powerful. Energizing. Um, yeah, but then there's 20% where you question your decisions a lot. Sometimes you question yourself a lot as well, I think. Um, because it can be a difficult world as well. I think yes. social media, but yes. it's amazing. You know, there, are, there are certain aspects that are um, that can be challenging and, and difficult, and you have to really. It's a very good way of assessing yourself and your own yeah. understanding, yeah, um, and your own ability to to be in a challenging environment. A lot of times, what I get demotivated with is that I'm like offering these lives and these like free classes, but uh, you know the level of participation is not that much. So I sometimes mm -hmm. get unmotivated sometimes it's amazing you know mm. um a lot of people participate and it's just so energizing and 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 mm. so gratifying but sometimes that's the negative side of it and sometimes you hear like criticism and judgments from other people saying you're doing this wrong and so those are the, the negative aspects 20 percent but um a lot of really nice beautiful things too i think i've really grown personally uh since mm. i've started doing that but I have to say, it's so interesting that you say you started pretty much at the same time. Yeah. But you're a lot more driven and I would say energetic and motivated than I am uh, because, you know, you your uh, content um, is really consistent and you consistently create videos that are amazing. You put so much time and effort into oh. your amazing videos and your lessons are absolutely amazing. And, you know... Growing up, trying to learn English, if I had opportunities of like having channels like yours for free, it's just, I think for people, it should be unbelievable that people have these opportunities. Yeah. Um, like it was um, watching your video about teaching phrasal verbs and it was awesome, you know, for yeah. people to have that opportunity for free to be able to join. And a lot of people don't take advantage of that. And yeah. it's just so mystifying sometimes for me. Yeah, definitely. I um I did a live with um David from Speak Like David last week and he's amazing as well. Awesome. And he said a good point of like now is the best time if you want to be learning another language because there's so much free material out there and even say you can pick what style of teacher you want or you need whether it is cuz I always describe myself as I'm a bit more of a fun teacher um I'm more trying to take real life conversations. So I'm not trying to pretend to be something I'm not, which is something I struggle with as well on social media, with staying authentic to who you are and your strengths and also acknowledging your weakness, your weaknesses or your weak areas. Um, but I do think, yeah, absolutely. You can find any type of teacher. So whether you want someone who is fun or someone who knows more of the grammar rules or whatever it is, you can you've got that at your disposal man absolutely absolutely yeah. like a huge range that exists from like more academic serious teachers all the way to people who are like at that that yeah. um you know a liveliness yeah. and, and fun aspect to it like yours um yeah. yeah yeah it's definitely it's amazing sunshine said we appreciate it thanks for helping us learn english for free <laughs> and i do have to say people who are on my live I, I'm sure if they're not following you, they will be, but I'm sure most of them will be anyway. Um, they always get involved. They're always brilliant. Um, and so Ram is saying, it's an amazing live session. Yes, um, so I want to just ask you before we start with our hot English. Um, so for people who are learning English, and I know that you've learned English as a second language, mm -hmm. I think I'm right in saying that. Mm -hmm. What would be your top tips for people who are struggling or struggling to stay a little bit motivated with it or don't know where to where to turn to? What would be your little tips or your little nuggets of advice? 
Absolutely. So I think what is really important is for people to understand that there are two separate aspects to this, to this process. Mm -hmm. You have to have the knowledge, the theory of the language as an adult. You can't only pick it up in the environment. That's wrong. That's, I think, a really misguided belief that a lot of people, a lot of teachers promote and a lot of learners also Mm -hmm. uh, buy into. So, you know, if you are just in the environment and you talk to people, you will become a fluent speaker. I think that's that's not right. So yeah. you have to have the knowledge of it. You have to understand the different grammar rules and you have to, you know, consciously and intentionally go over phrases and collocations and vocabulary words related to different topics and study them. You have to understand and know the different aspects of pronunciation, the different important mm-hmm. elements of pronunciation. So you have to have the knowledge. So you can get that on the internet for free. Amazing resources. You can get a teacher, you can get books, amazing resources out there. And and then there is the practice part that is absolutely essential. Mm-hmm. You have to put all of that into practice. You have to start um, speaking and writing. Okay. So what I say is that I talk about the cycle. I have videos about that that I explain. I think if this cycle doesn't happen, the learning process never happens. The cycle is turning your input, what you get, whatever you read and you listen to, and all the knowledge that you gather, and then turn turn it into your output. What does it mean? So for example, you watch um, like a film, a movie, yeah. right? And what do you do with it? A lot of people think that if you just only watch movies, you're going to become fluent, but it's not going to happen until you complete the circle by t- talking about the movie, using yeah. the words and expressions mm-hmm. and idioms you heard and you saw in the movie, you talk to a friend, you give a summary to a friend or to a teacher, or you write about it, you know? Um, So creating that cycle. And I always recommend people doing things that are, uh, that they're really interested in and Mm. passionate about, you know, Mm. that's when that, that side of your brain that is also responsible for learning is triggered, something that you feel passionately about. If you're into, as you were just saying, if you're into like more fun stuff, you know, some people are interested in fashion and I don't know, comedy or, um, yeah. Yes. And then if you're interested in more serious stuff, um, I don't know, you're interested in psychology or self growth materials. There are Mm -hmm. so many amazing YouTube channels or, Mm -hmm. uh, or other like so many resources. You just go over them. And then you turn them into your output. I also talk about, um, like, you know, when it comes to learning grammar, grammar doesn't need to be boring. You can make it more interesting yeah. by going over the rules and then explaining it to someone, teaching it to someone, writing about it, creating your own quizzes, you know, yeah. making your own quizzes, making your own lessons, um, you know, starting things that are more creative yeah. rather than just the, you know textbook style of learning Mm -mm. I think it's sometimes hard because I know for me growing up in school the school setting I was in you're so taught that the best way to learn is from a book and just sitting and studying it and then putting onto another piece of paper and then doing an exam and that being it it's very square like especially the UK um, schooling system and I think sometimes when people are trying to learn a language, especially when they're older and out of education, they go back to that mode of learning instead of realizing that actually it can be much more fun, much more enjoyable, but you've got to put the work in yourself. You can't just expect to listen to a teacher or watch a teacher and go, great, I've I've absorbed all these new words. You've got to put it into practice and be motivated to learn, I think is where, where it's hard. Exactly. You can yeah. never listen and read and expect to learn. Yeah. Because language is is a motor skill. It's something that you do with your muscles in your face, in your jaw, with your brain. You know, it's it's an act. It's a performance. Yeah. It's not a theory to learn. Mm-hmm. So you have to act it. You have to use your muscles and and your brain cells in order to, you know, perform this thing. It's speaking yeah. and performing and um, experiencing yourself, conveying yeah. and expressing your thoughts and your feelings through, um, you know, speaking and writing. Yeah, definitely. I'm just going to bring up a couple of questions that we've had um, for you about mm-hmm. this. So Sunshine has said, can we learn English uh, by just listening to it like our mother tongue? 
I would say as an adult, you can't, you can't just do it one way. You can't break the cycle. You know, you yeah. can listen to it. You should listen to it all the time, you know, get as much input as you can, mm -hmm. whether it's in the form of like listening to a podcast or a YouTube channel, or it's going over a book and reading the uh, grammar structures and all that. And then yeah. you have to turn it into your output. You have to speak about it and and, and discuss it with someone and analyze it and um, and ha turn it into your output. I don't yeah. think that you can just passively, you passively can just probably improve your listening comprehension mm -hmm. or your reading mm -hmm. comprehension. You can understand better when someone talks, but mm -hmm. it won't increase your ability to speak. Or write. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I think um, I think you touched upon it about finding language that is relevant to you. And I think that's the beauty of learning a language when you're an adult. You don't need to know if you're if you're interested in the arts, for example, you don't really need to go and study scientific texts in English or whatever language you're learning. It's about finding something that's going to keep you engaged, that you're going to be able to talk about because you want to talk about it. You want to communicate with someone else because you find that topic or that content enjoyable. And I think that's the same with grammar because I think people hear the word grammar and they go, oh, because you go back to being a child where you had to just write out rules and, you know, it was either right or wrong. There was no sort of creativity involved. Yeah, I don't think. You know, one way I think you can make grammar really fun and enjoyable is when you're going over the materials, whatever level you're at, it doesn't matter. It can be a basic level learner or mm -hmm. um, advanced. Um, you go over the materials that interest you, that you feel passionately about, and then you look for those grammar structures. You're practicing mm -hmm. simple present. You listen to someone talk about fashion, if that's um, mm -hmm. what uh, rocks your boat. You listen to, to that person talk about um, fashion or, I don't know, psychology or history or geography or science. Mm -hmm. And then you try to um, find the simple present sentences and practice yeah saying them you know imitating and repeating mm. or you're trying to understand like conditional sentences go over something that interests you or watch a movie and try yeah. to just distinguish and take out one conditional sentence from that whole movie you know that's that's yeah. the way we practice grammar a lot of times yeah yeah definitely i yeah definitely and i think that's a good point you make there as well with pick a bite-sized goal don't mm -hmm. try and be able to read a whole 10,000 word essay in a night, you know, start with a page, you know, nice bite-sized goals. Yes. And this yes. is Johnny. So I know, I know his name is, he says to call himself Johnny. Um, he's asked you how, so how did you study English? What was your method? Okay. So I, um, whatever that I'm preaching right now, I did some of it. I mean, if I'd done as much as I'm saying, and if I did have the resources growing up, um, I would have become a confident um, communicator of English a lot sooner. I mm -hmm. did study it at university. I, I said that I studied English literature and then um, English teaching. So I did study it, I studied it academically, but I didn't really learn um, how to communicate from university at all, not even 1% mm -hmm. of it from university. It was everything I did on my own and not even from like uh, classes here and there, you know, there are a lot of English uh, classes, institutes mm -hmm. um, that teach English. Um, so I, I just um, read books that I was interested in and watched a lot of movies. And I started teaching, actually, this is the thing that I'm suggesting people do, um, teaching to other people, sometimes, you know, offering to teach basic level people for free, having, you know, forming yeah. groups or having what we call commitment buddies. Yeah. You, know, you find a friend and you practice with and you study with mm -hmm. and you, you mm -hmm. know, go through this journey together. Um, yeah. I started teaching very early, you know, that sometimes the things that I was learning, I would teach. Mm, yeah, and I think it's a very effective way of improving um, all the different aspects of your English. Yeah, I agree, definitely. De I yeah, uh, I I feel like I'm constantly learning as being a teacher. Um, are you okay to answer a couple of questions? We're getting a few Absolutely. questions. Absolutely, whatever. Yes, yeah. yeah. yes. I'm I feel that like we will get to the hot topic. Sure, um, sure. I feel like a lot of people are enjoying this, so I just I don't want to cut it down. So. Absolutely. Chris, 
Yeah, Chris has said, what do you enjoy teaching the most? That's a very good question. Quite a difficult now, question. I have, have you heard of this uh, thing that we call the state of flow? When people, there's this concept, which is really intriguing and I highly recommend that everybody go and research it and find it. It is the state of mind when you don't feel of the time passing, you're absolutely in your element and you're really enjoying yourself doing something that is a bit challenging, but also mm. very enjoyable and fun. And you're just all absorbed in the moment. Mm. I said that because a lot of times the state of flow I get when I'm working with maybe sometimes one person or a group of people who are highly motivated, very driven, and they're very intentional about their studying. And mm -hmm. I, for example, ask them to, and we have similar interests. So I work a lot on TED Talks, for example, something that mm -hmm. really interests me. Yeah. I use as materials for teaching yeah. um, or TED Talks, or sometimes YouTube videos or yeah. channels that talk about great stuff, things that are good for our self-improvement, you know, mm -hmm. personal growth, and also for English, for um, becoming better communicators of English. Yeah. So I enjoy doing that the most, you know, mm -hmm. um, telling people about all these grammar rules and pronunciation points, and they go and they study them and they uh, learn them. And then I ask them to go over a TED Talk and apply all those pronunciation points and grammar points to that TED Talk. And mm -hmm. then we have a class in which we discuss all these things. We go yeah. over the ideas um, primarily, but then we talk about pronunciation points and grammar points. Why did she use this tense? Why did she use that word? Mm -hmm. And uh, we take out those words to use them um, in a context related to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it is so enjoyable for me when that happens. And sometimes yeah. it's like the opposite. It's when, you know, someone um, wants to work with you and they say that I'm, um, really motivated and I want to do this it's my goal and I really need to uh, pursue this and achieve this but then they show up they don't do the work you know they're not ready mm. uh, they find it boring yeah. you know there's nothing that you can you know when someone finds something boring because they don't pay enough attention to it <laughs> that's what I say always and I yeah. believe in and sometimes you can't make people pay attention to something they don't want to pay attention to no, exactly. And I think that's it with learning a language. It, it is hard work and it takes effort. Um, and it takes more effort from the student than it does from the teacher. Or it should take more effort from the student than it does the teacher. Because uh, they should be the most motivated to learn, the person who's actually learning. But I think TED Talks is a, I use that all the time when teaching. It's such a great um, resource to use. Yeah. And I agree with you in that. And, it makes it enjoyable for you as the teacher because you're kind of getting something from it and I think humans in general um I think we maybe lightly touched upon this on our messages on Instagram our private messages you know we all have the same most people I think in hum humanity have the same needs and wants and desires and I think if you can tap into that when you're learning or teaching you get a good response back because everyone wants to debate these these amazing topics of love, culture, food, self-growth, all that. It's all, it's relevant yes. in any language. So I think that's a yes. great resource of how to teach, definitely. Yes. How about you? I'm curious about you. What do you find the most enjoyable? Because that was an amazing question. Uh, yeah, it was an amazing question. Um, what do I enjoy the most? I enjoy the same. I definitely think teaching now on social media is different it's very different from being in the classroom before social media i was always in a classroom which i personally i do love because i love that connection with someone and i like to get to know someone quite well and get to know them their personality traits things they like things they don't like what makes them tick um what are their flaws as a person because that's that's still brilliant um, and yeah. that's what makes you human so I think that's why I've tried, I avoided doing lives for a long time because I was quite nervous because it's quite a vulnerable state, I think, to do a live because um, I think you show your imperfections as well. But I like when I can get to know someone better when they are, when they want to learn English and I can see that they're actually passionate about trying to learn, they trying to do better. So if I give them something to do, a task or an idea, they actually go away to do it and come back and they've completed it. Because then I feel like I'm not wasting my time as it were. Um, because obviously, especially on social media, you get 
some people who you don't really want in your life <laughs> you know mm -hmm. the negative forms of people. Yes, yes. um yeah so I like it when someone is really keen to learn but I definitely need to start being more bringing topics that I study and read about in my personal life into the teaching world I've kept them quite separate at the moment mm -hmm. um, but I think from watching some of your lives recently and some of the things that you've shared you've definitely inspired me to go oh, I should I should bring that because that's Absolutely. passionate to me it's my personal life into the teaching bubble so yes. you know I've set them quite separate recently but I need to start merging them together start merging <laughs> yeah way yes absolutely yeah. I would love to see that I think you're a brilliant woman and uh, and I kind of like was not surprised that you were interested in these topics you know mm -hmm. and I think you would do an amazing job of integrating your teaching with you know the yeah. more um, serious stuff I mean yeah. I love your yeah. stuff, uh, style don't get me wrong I love your style of you know doing the more fun, enjoyable aspect of it, but you can definitely integrate the fun, fun, enjoyable, and the serious stuff, yeah. and personal growth and English all together. Yeah, definitely. That's what I need to. We will speak about that off off air a little bit. Maybe that can be our next live. <laughs> um, Savam has asked how to improve communication skills in English. Again, the same thing that we talked about. Yeah. It is doing the cycle. You know, getting the input and turning turn it into your output you know watch a ted talk and then give a summary of it use the words in the ted talk to talk about yourself you know you yeah. hear for example the word um procrastination in the ted talk that i was working on with my student this morning procrastination talk about your own um um incidents of procrastination mm -hmm. do you procrastinate who do you know um who procrastinates the most mm -hmm. or how do you think we can tackle this problem of procrastination you know using yeah. the word from that um source that you're studying and you're going over to uh talk about yourself yeah or just very objectively give summaries and narratives of the things that you listen to and you read yeah yeah definitely yeah Think great point um lolly lolly said what do you think of the shadowing method i know we've mentioned that just before so mm -hmm. i think i mean i think maybe we both have the same opinion here i think it's a good technique to yeah. use yes yeah, it's do. a great technique but you can't just shadow without having you remember i talked about the two separate um elements knowledge theory and practice you have to have the knowledge you have to know about stress in english you have to know about the different vowels, for example, mm -hmm. that we have in American English. For mm -hmm. example, we have long vowels and short vowels. They're very different. So you have to know about this before yeah. you start this shadowing process. Because if you have no idea about them and you just want to repeat, a lot of times you repeat the same mistake over and over again, and then it becomes fossilized, kind of like um, etched in your mind, and you can never get rid of it. So I think yeah. it's kind of like, it's a um, double-edged sword because mm -hmm. sometimes if you don't have the knowledge and you keep repeating something, I need to charge my computer before it yeah. dies. <laughs> so um, um, you have to have the knowledge before you shadow. You know, you have to know that we have these all these different uh, nuances and different details in English yeah. before you want to repeat. Yeah, it always makes me think when I talk about the shadowing technique. Um, I, the episode in Friends with Joey and Phoebe, where Joey is trying to learn French, and he's like blah 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 because he's just <laughs> copying her because he has sort of no idea of the language or the sounds or the letters beforehand. So I definitely think it's a great technique. But as you say, I think you need a, a base before you just jump to shadowing. And I also say um, to record yourself. So if you are shadowing, record yourself so you can hear it again after because you're probably more likely to then hear the mistakes and think oh mm, i pronounced the r wrong in that word or whatever it may be and then go back through it um but yeah you don't want to just do a joey <laughs> that's an awesome technique that was very yeah. funny first of all what you said about joey i had never thought about that but that that's going to be my example from now on um i'm going to steal your idea um yeah. 
for funny Nash. And I think recording yourself is such an amazing technique. The things that I've learned listening to myself, the things yeah. that you can never think of. You know, there are things that you can never understand when you're talking. Um, yeah. You know it. Sometimes a lot of times you do know it, but you don't know that you're doing that. You know, the time, the filler words that you use or the pauses or how many times you sometimes say, you know, you know, or like, like a lot of these things. You know, something curious that I found out about myself listening to uh, my own, watching my own videos was that I sometimes leave sentences incomplete. You know, I had no idea. <laughs> and I was saying something and then I don't finish it. And, you know, I used to like rewind the, the thing, the, tape or the, the video to like really make sure that I did not finish that sentence. And I was in awe of that. I would have <laughs> never really, un, um, you know, realized that. Mm -hmm. If I hadn't done that, but it was like, I started doing that for my classes the first time before the social media thing. And then I would listen to those. And it, it really um, surprised me. And then I learned so much about what I need to do to stop doing yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I say like a lot. And I hear that when I, even if I'm sending voice, because I send a lot of voice notes. Um, and I'll be like, oh, I've said like 20 times in 10 seconds. Like, that's really <laughs> impressive. <laughs> like, <I'm sure. laughs> so it's definitely something you have to think about. But I would say with um, when you are recording yourself, um, if you're doing it for yourself, so if you're learning English and you're going to record yourself, don't judge yourself too harshly because I think mm -hmm. we could all maybe agree when you play back something, a recording, and you hear your own voice. Um, sometimes when I watch my own Instagram video or a YouTube video that I've done, I think, oh, is that my voice? Is that how I sound? So I think sometimes you can be too critical about the non-important think really so just know absolutely. why you're listening to it back if you're not absolutely we could talk about that for hours on uh, you yeah. know the, the self-critic that's sitting in your head and stops yeah. you from improving exactly. whatever sort of pronunciation that you have whatever sort of accent that you have whatever level of communication that mm. you have you have to learn to just speak up and yeah. own it in order to be able to improve it because if you don't do that you will never improve you'll just you're just stuck you know where you are because you're afraid of um, improving. So I'm not saying that you should be critical of yourself or try to really correct every single yeah. mistake at once. Um, you just have to understand that in order to be able to improve, you have to make mistakes. You know, there's no way around it. You know, there are a lot of um, people who are not making any mistakes in the world. I've never made any mistakes um, you know, I don't know, um, playing basketball because I've never played basketball, right? So if you're yeah. not making any mistakes, it's because you're not doing anything. Mm, yeah, exactly. I follow a lot of um, Brené Brown, who if people are interested in personal growth, I would recommend her. And she always talks about being vulnerable. And I always say that to my students, that to learn English, there is an element of just being a bit vulnerable by sending the voice note, by recording yourself speaking, by asking a question in English or asking for directions in English or wherever you can adapt it to your life. That takes courage and takes a little bit of bravery. But once you've done that first step, sort of the, the feeling you get from it should help you then continue on to do the next little step, the next little step. So I definitely think she's, she's quite yeah. a powerful woman, definitely. Yes. Yeah very helpful um Raphael has asked you some people think that grammar rules are not important to speak English what is your opinion we've had so many questions for you by the way so uh -huh. I am really sorry uh, are you okay to answer them of course yes okay. yes as long as you would like to yeah just run the show whatever way you'd like to and I'm, I'm just really enjoying it <laughs> So yeah. um, I think that is a very dangerous belief. I'm going to be dramatic about it. I think it's really dangerous and it'll keep, keep you stuck for a long time. Grammar rules are absolutely necessary. They're essential mm -hmm. to your learning. They give you confidence. You know, if you don't know whether what you're saying is correct or not, how are you going to be comfortable and confident about your communication? You have to know the rule. You're going to start making a lot of mistakes and, you know, um, botch it up, mess it up, saying it yeah. up wrong. 
a lot of times until you get it right, until you correct it, okay? Yeah. But it's absolutely essential knowing the grammar because grammar is what tells you how to put certain words next to one another, you know, string them together and make a sentence. Mm -hmm. You have to know the grammar structures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, very good answer. Uh, pardon? What do you think? Um, it's hard. I, I, it, it's not my strong point, and I do. I, I always say yes. You need to learn them. You have to have an element of studying the rules to get it right. Um, but I also say sometimes I, I find from students they say that's the hardest aspect of learning English. So I say don't get hung up on it because once you have a simple sentence formed, you can then develop from there. And it's, it's again, it's that confidence of it's okay to make a mistake with the grammar rules, but you still have some of the vocabulary words there to be able to communicate and be able to get your point across. And then from that, again, it's going to be, okay, why did that person not understand me? Oh, it's because my grammar was wrong. So now I need to work on another tense or however the structure of the sentence needs to be. And again, it's just building, keep building up your 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 whole broad, uh, range of English. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely think native speakers, I personally, well, I can't, I can't make that generalization, but I know that my grammar uh, is weak. <laughs> I have to admit, it's Absolutely not. Absolutely not. What? I know. It's I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I it's, and it's got better since teaching because I've had to teach myself and then teach and know how to teach it to other people. Um, I mean, in the past 36 uh, minutes that we've uh, been speaking, do you think you've made one grammar mistake? Oh, probably you 10. No, you have not. I'm, I'm just ultra sensitive about that. <laughs> you have not. You know, I think it's a misconception that people say, you know, there are some exceptions. There are things that people, native speakers, get wrong all the time, like 70% mm -hmm. of the time. Like, for example, the difference between lay and lie. Okay. So a lot of times people say that incorrectly. And then from this little minute detail, people kind of overgeneralize and say, you know, native speakers make a lot of mistakes. But it's not like that. When you're saying you make a lot of mistakes, you're just being very hypersensitive about your grammar. You're not mm -hmm. saying that um, you make grammar mistakes all the time. You're just saying that sometimes the things that you say don't, they're not like textbook grammar. They're yeah. acceptable. Mm -hmm. People accept them as like um good way of speaking. Yeah. But it's not that you have grammar mistakes because sometimes when people like hear you say that, they kind of mm -hmm. assume that like um you regularly make grammar mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. not like that. Yeah, that's so true. That is very true. Definitely. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> Maybe I'm being critical. Um sometimes that's true. Let me also I... say something like um very quickly about what you said about being hard. Uh, some people say it's hard. I would say if you don't study it and if you don't master it, it's gonna be a lot harder. Your yeah. life is gonna be a lot harder because you know it is hard. It is sometimes it takes a lot of work. We have so many ways to make it more interesting and to make it um, you know, more relevant to you, like what you were saying, you have conversations with your students about themselves. So that's mm -hmm. very interesting. What is more interesting than that? You know, talking to someone about yourself for two hours. What is more exciting, more exciting than that? And through that, also learn grammar structures. So, for example, yeah. I talk to my students. We want to discuss conditional sentences. I say I ask them interesting hypothetical questions. I ask them to ask me interesting, come up with interesting hypothetical questions. Mm -hmm with you know using the conditional structures or using simple present to talk about their routine their habits yeah. schedule to talk about their past using simple past. so all of that but then if you don't study that then you're always i know i personally know so many people who have been speaking english for 30 years for years and they didn't do that they didn't go through that phase of hard and they're still speaking really incorrectly. They don't have confidence. Mm. They don't speak up because they're always doubtful about their English. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a good point. I definitely think it's better to go through the hard stage earlier on because then once you get through it, you're going to be like, yay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you've got two sort of personal questions. So the first sure. one is up on the screen from Sunshine saying, um, so what does your name mean? I actually... So 
let me make it into a riddle and ask people to see if they know what it is. Yes. Okay. Uh, so my name is a word that could have two different meanings. One is a color that is like a, a bluish green color, greenish blue or bluish green. No, greenish blue, I would mm -hmm. say, color. <laughs> and the other one is, uh, is a stone that has that color. It's like a stone, a rugged jewel, if you will. If you, if I want to respect myself more, I would say it's a jewel that has that color. Yeah. Okay, so cool. What do you guys think? It starts with a T. Does anyone have any idea? Yeah. The comments, right? I'll see the comments. There is a little bit of a delay. Sunshine oh. has said, yeah, I know it's color, but you've not given the answer, Sunshine. So it begins with a T. Um, mm -hmm. It's bluish green jewel. Mm -hmm. um, I remember this actually from our other live. Uh, While I'm waiting for the comments to come in, the second sure. sort of qu personal question we had, oh, I might have lost it somewhere now, was further up here, and they asked. So this is Comanji. Um, so I think you, he may have not joined from the start. So are you Kurdish or Persian, and where's your hometown? I um, am Persian, yeah. and I'm from Shiraz. Have you heard that the wine Shiraz? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's, it's the name yeah. of a city in Iran, and that's actually the origin of that wine. They um, first started producing that in that city. So it's a city in Iran. It's uh, like one of the southern cities in Iran uh, that is famous for its poets and mm. its poetry, and it's uh, where you know a lot of prominent um, figures in Iran are from. And I just adore that city. Uh, yeah, you must miss home. I would imagine. I do. Yeah. Um, oh, I've, yes. I've had, uh, so English Vibes has said Topaz. No, that's a good guess. That is a no, good guess. Yeah. We've had that a couple of times, actually. Um, Sunshine is saying it's Shiraz. Tur. <laughs> it starts with T U R. Anyone? Turk. Yeah. Mm, I'm trying to think of um, Armenian wine. <laughs> yeah, uh, you might describe the sea if you go swimming in a beautiful yes. ocean at some point as this colour as well. This is not topaz, but that's such a good guess, actually. I didn't even think of it. But that's, um, that's not blue, right? That's, um, it's, it's, it's colourless, is it? Is it? Well, that might be a Google. <laughs> Google. Um, oh, that's yellow. Different. That's yellow. Oh, is it yellow? Oh. Topaz is, topaz is yellow. Hmm. Um, it is a I learned something. Topaz is a gem name in my language too. So it is, I don't know, whenever you're ready to give them the answer, it's turquoise. Turquoise. I remember this from last time, our last live, turquoise. So it's a nice name, a nice um, meaning, yeah. turquoise. Yeah. Um, mm -mm. Um, okay, Jose. Jose is hello, Jose. He's asked, which is the um, which is more important in communication, accent or pronunciation? So that's a very interesting question. You know, the way I define accent, accent mm. is your pattern of pronunciation. Everything about your pronunciation, when you put together, becomes your accent. Okay, so the way I say ah or ah oh, or e or the way I stress the words and the way um, I, you know, a lot of times when people have a certain accent in a second language, it's because they borrow all those uh, patterns from their first language. So your accent is actually like all these different millions of pronunciation points. I mean, I'm exaggerating. It's not millions. Don't, don't, I don't want to scare people off. <laughs> it's probably like 100 um, separate uh, pronunciation points. When you put them all together, it's your accent. I would say you should not worry about your accent. You just have to get it out, out of your head. You should mm -hmm. just worry about your, or be not, not worry about it, but pay attention to your pronunciation, you know, to get yeah. your stress right, to get the, the consonants right. You know, if you are, you're working on how to say the TH sound, right? To say, th you have to put your tongue here and you have to move your mouth there. And there are a lot of different, instructions that you can listen to and you can practice to get all these sounds absolutely right anyone even people with speech problems 
mm. can do that. You know, our brain has that ability to um, what we call neuroplasticity. It means your brain has the ability to change, actually. And mm. it's something that is absolutely doable to practice your pronunciation. I would say just don't worry about your accent. Just worry about all these different elements of pronunciation. And then you can have the, the accent that you want to have. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree completely. I um, I get asked a lot, actually, um, how can I get a British accent? And I always reply with, which one? <laughs> which British accent are you after? Um, and I always just, I always say, focus on your fluency, focus on your pronunciation. Because mm -hmm. also, I think your accent is your identity, that we both have very different accents, you know. Um, and it's, part of who you are it kind of defines you a little bit and I think it should be something that you're proud of especially if you've got your fluency down and your pronunciation down then I don't think accents should play a massive part in your um and when learning uh, English except if you are very advanced and then you're basically bilingual and then you want to go and focus on studying an accent absolutely but I definitely think if you're starting out you're intermediate it's just not something that you need to be to add to add to the list as it were I think there's other issues you could be working on before you start to criticize and try and change your accent absolutely definitely. I absolutely believe in everything that you just said and I agree with that I also can add that you know sometimes people want to master an art or a skill right if you want to look at it that way, you know, some someone is really fascinated by the British accent, like your accent, um, that that specific British accent, mm. and they want to master it. And I don't think there is anything wrong with that. You yeah. know, it's not that you're um, you hate your identity or um, you just want to um, you know put on a mask and mm -hmm. pretend that you're someone else. I definitely did not. Uh, learn the American accent because I, I hated where I came from. Yeah. I really wanted to master that that art of being able to speak this way, you know, mm -hmm. to kind of gauge myself and and um, see, evaluate myself and see how well I can master that. Like a yeah. lot of things that we learn in life to un understand all the nitty gritty and all the details and nuances of something and to yeah. be able to master it. You know, if someone, um, I don't know, from India or from um, Spain, um, was able to do what you're doing the way you're speaking, like in a matter of three years, they, they have that goal. What is wrong with that? You know, I, I'm from Spain, but I want to master the British accent. I want mm -hmm. to learn like um, how the T is pronounced or how um, all these vowels are pronounced. Yeah. Or I think that's also a good goal if it's not, um, there is no bad intention behind mm. it, you know, wanting yeah. to being insecure about yourself and not being confident about who you are and yeah. wanting to, um, you know, put on a, a mask and be someone else. Yeah, to do it for the right reasons. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Um, Martin, Martin lives in the Czech Republic. I know that because I used to live there. Um, so he said, so this is going back to what we talked about, um, well, probably 20 minutes ago now um when I play my record so when I play my recording I don't understand what I'm saying what should I do it's okay. a good question Martin that's a very good question it can teach you a lot about how you're speaking so when you listen to yourself and you don't understand what you're saying first of all if you have that ability to understand you know if you learn the basics of pronunciation Okay, um, you know that we have stress. Stress is really important in the level of intelligibility. You know how well people can understand you. If you're not putting the right stress in the words, it becomes really confusing for people uh, mm -hmm. to understand you. So is it stress? Is it that you um, borrow a lot of the elements from your first language and you apply it to English that kind of... Um, uh, distracts people or yourself from understanding what you're saying if you have that basic that knowledge uh, basis then you'll be able to understand what it is if you don't have that first of all you can acquire that um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna promote one of my videos here I made a okay. video for I don't know if you know Hedar or not um, uh, Hedar okay. has, a, has a nice channel has a very good channel on YouTube yeah I love and, her 
Yeah, I, I love her work too. She's a non-native speaker and you guys can, you should definitely follow her. Um, I made a, a video on her channel about the elements of pronunciation and I have a lot of them on my own channel too, talking about the different elements of pronunciation. So if you're aware of all these different elements and then you will understand that, oh, okay, so my stress is really off and the way I pronounce the vowels is really wrong or um, I can't really pronounce this certain consonant like the R sound, which is really mm. important in um, English. I can't get that wrong, right? So when you put all that together, it becomes really incomprehensible, right? Yeah. Um, so if you have that knowledge or you are motivated enough to, to get that knowledge and apply it to, under, um, to understand what is wrong, you can do that. Or you can ask someone else. You can ask a teacher or a friend to, um, I mean, not a friend, a teacher who has the knowledge um, to say what's wrong with that. Because it could be really helpful. I think it's amazing yeah. that the person does that, that this person has started doing that, recording yourself and listening to it. This is the yeah. very brave first step. And then mm -hmm. the second one is to analyze it. Yeah. To see what needs to be improved or modified yeah definitely and again you can even reach out to a teacher via social media and ask them to listen to a, um, mm -hmm. a recording and people will get back to you and help you spot it out but it might be a case martin of going back to your the sounds of the english language yeah. and then hearing where you're maybe going a little bit wrong yeah. um also knowing it, that you know this is good that you've recognized this problem so now you can make the steps to rectify it. So yes. We'll and they can also join the lives that a lot of teachers have, especially in Instagram. A lot of people yeah. are having lives and they um, accept people live and they talk about their uh, pronunciation mistakes and grammar mistakes. A lot of times, you know, I really uh, wish it, it were different, but the way it is is that a lot of people don't like to talk about their mistakes in a live, you know, in front of other people. But if you're a learner and you really want, you really want to improve, you have to accept that this is something that can be really helpful and effective for you, you know, to mm -hmm. join lives and ask people what is wrong with my English? What is, what, where did I get their grammar point wrong? And uh, what was wrong about my pronunciation? It could be really helpful. Yeah, definitely. Especially if you're you you know it's on instagram or youtube or wherever it is and that's a free resource that you're getting another option might be to join um a speaking club if you can afford it or a private lessons as well but again i know that sometimes can be an issue the price um yeah. jesse's asked us how has covid impacted the way you're teaching or engaging with your students online have you learned anything about teaching and language because of this global crisis <laughs> that's an amazing question um it has actually affected my life positively i'm sorry to say yeah, that's amazing. But, um the thing is that so i worked at a college for five years and they ended up closing that was not the fortunate part because i loved working there and yeah. uh, we had students from all over the world from asia and europe and it was such an amazing place to work at, but I also had my online classes on the side, uh, fortunately. So uh, when the school closed, first temporarily and then permanently, we have other branches mm -hmm. in the US that um, I could possibly join, but for now it's closed and it's been closed for like more than three months. Yeah. So that's, that's the aspect of it that I don't have. But then instead I started like having more online classes and I started, um, you know, having live um, Instagram sessions and uh, working more on that that online aspect of it. And mm -hmm. I really love reading and listening to audiobooks and podcasts. So I've been doing a lot of that and watching movies and, you know, doing a lot of things yeah. that are really um, enjoyable and pleasant for me. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, something that I should also say, I mean, uh, that person asked about the aspect of my job, but uh, the fact that I'm mostly introverted, I'm such an introvert. I love, love people. And mm. I, you know, there's this misconception that introverted people yeah. just hate people and they don't want to talk to them. But that's just very untrue. There is this amazing book about that that everyone um, should read. The Power of Introverts uh, oh. is a great book. Yes. And are you an introvert? 
<sighs> no. No, you're not. That. Yeah, I was going to be like, maybe. But I think that <laughs> I think I'm... Um, I, I used to be more of an extrovert. I'm definitely going... I can't remember the word for when you're in the middle. I'm definitely moving across. Yeah, I think... Mm -hmm. I think, oh, yeah, I think I'm an extrovert. Okay. Yeah. Um, so because I'm I'm introverted, mm -hmm. um, I really like the time on my own and the the fact that I can without worrying about you know all these things that I should commit to socially. Yeah. Um, you know, focus on my own reading and um, mm. and work and and other aspects of life. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I, I think I would agree. I mean. For me, um, it, it didn't affect my job because I was living in the Czech Republic. So uh, fortunately, it just didn't hit there that badly. So we were in lockdown for, well, we were in lockdown for a month. It was quite strict, but then it eased out of it fairly quickly as well. So I was still working. Um, I think it's been, it made me reevaluate what was important in my life, I think, and what and I think before it happened, I was just go, 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 go. Uh, and it made me sort of take stock and uh, have a bit of time to think and reevaluate areas in my life that needed improving, um, areas in my life that needed to change, I think. So I think that was my positive to take away from it. It also gave me definitely time to focus a little bit more on being online. Um, but actually at the same time, I, I'm gonna say, allow me to take a break from it and and just think if this is where I wanted to be what changes I needed to make so there's definitely been positives I think to people's personal lives um I think definitely people have realized what's important for them and maybe how they were living their life before isn't how they want to continue or they want to try and take some more time for themselves um yeah so I've, it's yeah. been. A lot I mean, of people also yeah. feel miserable, and I feel bad for them. You know, it's it's hard for a lot of people. For yeah. example, people who are really extroverted, and you know, they live on socializing with other people, and going to parties, and being like, you know, in yeah, crowds all the time. Or people who are just so dependent on going to restaurants and coffee shops and traveling. And it's yeah, been really hard. Yeah, I think as well, it's been hard on people's mental health, for sure. Yes, yeah. That's an element where people have so had to So this YouTube thing doesn't kick you out after an hour? No, it doesn't. But I will, um, I okay. am just going to say to everyone who is watching, we won't be doing the hot um, English idioms. Because I think this chat's been, well, I think um, probably more interesting than that would have been. And hopefully you have gained some valuable skills from listening to this. Um but maybe we can do that another time. <laughs> I would love that. Yes, that's an awesome plan. Yeah, so it doesn't cut us off at an hour, so we don't have to rush our goodbyes. Okay. But um, we will slowly wrap it up because I don't want to take too much of your time. Or I know a lot of people who are watching are based in India, and I know the time for them must be almost 1 a.m., I think. So we will start to wrap it up. I know Savam here, who has a question, is in India. And he's just said, how can I brush my English skill um, daily basis? So how can I, I think, keep, keep up? On. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, again, the thing that I said, just always remember that. How can I get some interesting, useful input and turn it into output? That's the best way to brush up on your English. Mm -hmm. um, to, you know, listen, if you're interested in the news, but which I'm not, but if you are, uh, then yeah. you listen to the news and then you talk to your friend about it. You record mm -hmm. your voice um, saying what you heard, using all those words and um, phrases that you heard, the grammar, paying attention to the grammar structures and mm -hmm. wanting to repeat that exactly the same. Yeah. Um, you know, just think about, get creative. What can you do? Because yeah. it's personal, you know, everyone can do it for themselves. I can mm -hmm. get my own input and turn it in my own output, whatever way that I'd like to. Um, so think about that. How can you listen to something and read something and then use those things that you take out from um, the listening and reading material and turn it into your output? Can I talk to a friend? Can I um, create a group and video chat on a weekly basis or a daily basis? Can yeah. I start a YouTube channel? You know, yeah. I always recommend that. What's, what's wrong? is going to care first of all so you know yeah. 
a lot of times people don't just even notice that you have a YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it can grow into something that is going to be amazing. You know, you start mm -hmm. your YouTube channel and then you commit to um, creating a 15 minute YouTube video every week. And for yeah. that, you have to prepare a lot. So, for example, you want to talk about computers or um, technology, whatever that interests you. Mm -hmm. um, so make that commitment and make 15 minute videos weekly or yeah. maybe daily if you're more motivated or courageous. Mm -hmm. For that 15 minutes, you have to prepare a lot and read a lot and listen a lot and absorb a lot of information. Start your own podcast. Start your own um, WhatsApp group. Yeah. There are so many things that people can do. Yeah, definitely. I think it goes back to what we were saying earlier about um, find what you love and do it in English. So if you have a hobby that you like to do uh, where you live or something that you like to watch, or if you say you're big on to, into football, listen to a podcast on your way to work on football. There's mm -hmm. so many to choose from. And then whoever else likes football in your family or your friendship group, talk to them about it. So it is just about finding the little things and taking 15, 20 minutes, half an hour every day just to keep keep it going, keep it fresh in your mind, keep using it. Uh, exactly. Use it or you lose it. <laughs> exactly. Use um, it or lose it. Yeah. Sunshine has asked you, and then I think this is our last question. Um, sure. so, oh, no. That actually, I will come back to this one. She's asked two questions for you. Um, do you have a quote from Omar Hyman? Hi, Ma'am. Uh -huh. Uh, so the way we say it in uh, Farsi is Omar Hayam. It's the, it has Hayam. the sound. You can yeah. say that. And uh, Hayam, a lot of people like in English say Hayam. Hayam. Um, quotes in English or Farsi? Either. <laughs> but if you don't, don't worry, because I realize that could be quite, I don't think I would know if someone asked me um, a quote of someone. You know, he has his famous for having a lot of poetry that, promotes this idea that sees the day. You know, that's the origin of that. Oh, like uh, coffee, sees coffee. The day. Yeah. yeah, corporate diem, exactly. Mm. That's that's the origin of um, that thing. So he, a lot of people attribute a lot of um, verses that are not actually his, uh, that promote this idea that, you know, take, take it easy, you don't need to work, you don't need to hustle, you know, just enjoy the time, drink wine and, you know, drink away. And a lot of, t a lot of people who are like into those ideas, they just use his ideas that are like grand ideas in nature, but they use them to, um, you know, take it easy and just, um, yeah. you know, have fun in life. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, Jose, who, um, oh. Just adorable he said welcome to this community thank and absolutely you so thank you Jose um so I'm gonna wrap it up so Sunshine has asked the perfect question which I was just going to mention your YouTube channel so where can people find you absolutely so my YouTube channel name is Firuza it's the way my name is spelled and that's mm -hmm. that's all you just look up Firuza and maybe add English to it <laughs> you'll find it and uh on instagram uh where i have uh weekly lives i usually have two lives a week uh yeah. i'm firuza and then there's another h at the end um and i also have my website laenglishcollege.com and yes that's all about yeah. me i would love to see you guys there everybody yeah have been amazing yeah, i will say um that your channel handle is in the description of this youtube live so if you click the arrow button it should pop up so then they can easily find you from that so you don't have to type it in or you can type it in um you're fairly easy to find uh this live will be put on my channel so again if they want to go back and try and find you it will just be on the description you'll be tagged you're also been tagged on my Instagram um, and I've shared your story so that's another way uh, to find you very easily Absolutely. but I will say everyone is saying thank you so much to you um thank you thank you unity and everything and you've been amazing I do thank want to apologize you. for not doing the topic that I said we were going Absolutely to do not. no we're gonna do it I'm, I'm excited I, I insist that we should do that yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's a very interesting work. topic so yeah. Uh, definitely let's do that another time 
Yeah, but definitely. I really enjoy talking to you. This is the second time I've had um, a live with you, and I've enjoyed every single minute of it. I think you're such an adorable uh, person, very sweet, very nice, very kind, very knowledgeable, and um, you're a gem. Thank you so much. Yeah. No, thank you for participating and being brilliant and sharing your wisdom. Um, it's been wonderful, and I'm sure everyone else agrees with that as well. And we will do this again, definitely. First of all, I'm just going to say I'm going to end the broadcast, but then you and I will still be on, just so you know. For sure. For sure. Just for a second. But I will say bye to everyone who's participated. Oh thank you for your amazing questions. You've been absolutely just perfect. <laughs> Couldn't want that. Yeah. Bye, bye guys. Bye. bye.